Hi, I'm Dr. David Hill, and today we're going to be talking about infant lead poisoning symptoms. Now, the first question is, how would an infant get lead poisoning? Lead poisoning is more common in children who can run around and put things in their mouths. So the most common uh, lead poisoning occurs in toddlers, kids who are running around and chewing on paint or windowsills that may have collected lead or putting paint chips in their mouths. They may have found a toy that was manufactured with lead and chewed on that. Why would they do such a thing? Well, lead tastes good. That's the problem with it. That's why kids do it. They're not crazy. Lead is kind of sweet and tastes kind of nice, but it's very, very dangerous. Um, how would an infant get lead poison? What if that infant can't crawl around and chew on things that have lead on them? Well, there are a couple of sources. One common and dangerous source is actually dietary supplements, especially those that are manufactured in foreign countries like China, India, or Mexico. Many of these dietary supplements are contaminated with lead. Lead gives them flavor, or lead may be part of some sort of healing tradition. Unfortunately, it is also a potentially deadly poison that at the least will cost the child IQ points and may set them back developmentally. Another source uh, could be around the house in children who are able to crawl and walk. A third source could be contamination from clothing or hands of somebody who works with lead. Perhaps one of the family members is an artist and works with lead paints or leaded glass. They might work in a battery factory or an electronics factory with a lot of solder or in a manufacturing or construction business where lead components are utilized. Some of these lead particles may come into the house. Another place that lead could come from is from renovating an older house. If you leave the lead paint alone, it's covered up with other paint, it's probably not going to get into the environment. But it's chipping, or gosh forbid, if you start taking a sledgehammer or a saw to it and sending this lead paint dust out into the air, then it is in the environment and the infant may well contact it. How do you know? Well, if your infant is having signs of lead poisoning, the lead poisoning is really bad. Symptoms only occur at very high, very dangerous levels of lead poisoning. What are those symptoms? The symptoms may be lethargy. The baby may seem unusually sleepy, poorly responsive to stimuli. He or she may be pale because lead poisoning causes anemia. He may seem easily fatigued or be breathing too fast. Or you might look at the eyes or the mouth and think, gosh, that baby doesn't look as pink as he should. Your baby may have abdominal pain for no reason. That would also be a potential sign of lead poisoning. If you're worried about lead poisoning, for gosh sake, take your baby to a medical provider who can check a lead level. Now, we do screen lead levels in babies uh, a couple of times during early childhood, but the screening test can come back falsely positive a lot of times. So when we're really worried, instead of just doing a heel stick to get that lead level, we actually take blood from a vein and send it to the lab that tends to be a lot more accurate. We can also look for anemia by checking red blood counts. So, for gosh sake, if you're worried that your child has lead poisoning, get that child checked out. You probably cannot undo some of the intellectual damage that occurs with lead poisoning, so the sooner you catch it and stop it, the better. Talking about signs and symptoms of lead poisoning in your infant, I'm Dr. David Hill.